Welcome back to the channel everyone. My name is Joe Buskins. This is our family's boat shop that my father built back in the 1960s. Since that time, our family's built over 300 boats and done thousands of fiberglass and gel coat repair jobs. And today we have a pretty cool experiment and episode all together. And I get a lot of questions about compatibility with epoxy and polyester resins. And today we are actually gonna be mixing some materials you wouldn't typically mix together. And I kinda of wanna see what the results are gonna be and then try to answer some basic questions about epoxy and polyester and gel coat compatibility along the way. So if you look behind me, you can see I've got a table full of products. And if we're starting over here, we've got some Epoxy resin from Fiberlay. We've got some West Systems, the 105 epoxy. And then we've got our gel coat here from Fiberglass Warehouse in the middle that we're gonna be using kind of as the baseline to mix some of these materials with. And then the ever popular vinyl ester resin and a polyester iso tooling. Now these are primarily the main materials that I would use in a weekly or a daily basis. I really like the vinyl ester, the polyester iso laminating, and the epoxy resin. That covers almost all of your bases. And I get questions constantly about compatibility. Can I put gel coat over epoxy or can I stack this or stack that and what's gonna work together? And I wanna show you folks what's gonna happen when we mix some of this, this stuff together. Now, as a general rule, folks in the industry like myself that has grown up around it and done a lot of repair work, the general rule of thumb is that you do not put anything that's polyester or vinyl ester over an epoxy. So if you were to use some epoxy resin to repair your boat and plan on using polyester-based gel coat, that is potentially a problem. Now, I'm gonna kinda lead you guys into, on our next episode, or even the one following, I've got a product that I've discovered that is supposed to be very good as a tie coat to help those two work together. But in the meantime, let's do some experimenting today. So I'm gonna put some, as always, some, uh, some PPE, some safety glasses, or some work glasses, and some gloves to protect our hands from the materials we're gonna be using. And what I went ahead and did is to save time as I poured up about 50 milliliters of each one of these materials. And we're gonna mix them in more or less equal volumes and kind of just see what the results are gonna be. So we're gonna start with probably one of the most popular materials is gonna be the polyester resin. And we got some MEKP. That stands for methyl ethyl ketone peroxide or the hardener or activator for styrene based products like vinyl ester and polyester. And as a rule of thumb, about 10 drops per ounce. So we're gonna go about 15 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. And one more for good measure. There we go. Now that should be enough for our polyester resin to activate. So what we're gonna do, you would almost never ever do this, but I think it's gonna give me a good example of showing compatibility as far as the materials. I'm gonna activate this resin, activate a exact same amount of gel coat, and then we're gonna mix them together and see what happens, what the end result is. So poly for poly, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, 10, 11. All right, we should be good. We should be good there. So same deal, gonna work this material in. Now I'm gonna try to speed through this as fast as possible, but still be thorough. Now this is probably something you would never do at home because you would just kinda hate to waste materials but I'm willing to do this for you folks in the name of science and just see what happens. So here we go with our polyester resin into gel coat, which gel coat ultimately, all you're talking about when you're dealing with gel coat, folks, it is a high quality polyester resin with pigments and some fillers in it. It is not a vinyl ester and it's not an epoxy. Um, it is a polyester resin based material. So if you look, 
the blending on that is almost seamless. Hard to tell that that's anything but white gel coat. Looks really, really nice. So what we're gonna do though, as a test, we're gonna come back around here on the back and I've got some pans. So we're going polyester for polyester in this pan. And I just wanna see how this reacts or how it cures and looks if you were to spread it out a little bit as if you were actually using this product. All right, good, good enough. We're just gonna let that sit for a moment. So we've done our poly to poly. Now we are gonna go with vinyl ester. Same deal, I'm gonna try to do this fast. That's gonna be about right. All right, good deal. Thoroughly mix one to the other. I hope you guys are enjoying the kind of content. You know, over the last several months, we were doing our hard top build for our 29 foot center console there in the background that we built here in our family shop. And a lot of folks have questions about that. We went through the whole process of building the plug or the pattern and a mold and then the actual part itself. All right, here we go. You can see that really changed colors there. The vinyl ester from fiberglass warehouse tends to really change tones and colors once you've added the activator. And here we'll go with the mix. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but you can actually blend a lot of different resins, polyester and vinyl ester. You can add some polyester to vinyl ester and vice versa and make blends. I would always recommend experimenting a little bit, like maybe do a small test batch with whatever material you have before you go mix a large amount to be sure it works. But you can see again here, the vinyl ester, we get a really nice blend there. Not a problem. All right, so here we go. The pan, we're going vinyl for vinyl there. All right, very nice. Now, we've got our epoxy. So what we're gonna do is we are going to mix. I went ahead and got equal amounts, the correct amounts, and we're gonna make sure we get every bit of that. Now, epoxy resin is a little more sensitive about getting the amount or the ratio exactly right. If you don't mix it at the right ratio, you may have a problem with it activating or curing Now, if you're curious what your boat is built of, I can tell you that unless it is a very, very high-end specialty, lightweight craft or something very, very high performance, chances are that it is built out of a polyester resin. And it is quite okay if you are doing repair work at home and you wanna put gel coat over, like say do some repair work and you want a very, very high quality resin to do the job, and you want to use gel coat as your finish coat, then it is usually recommended for me to use the vinyl ester resin as your repair material. Now you can also build a whole boat out of the vinyl ester resin, and that is more common than epoxy. It is actually quite rare for a boat to be built in its entirety out of epoxy. Maybe some of the uh, parts that may have a lot more flex or may, may use epoxy as a bonding agent for some of the hardware that may need to be put in there. But chances are, if you folks, you DIYers at home and folks that are wanting to wonder what their boat is made out of, most likely polyester resin. So we have activated our catalyst. 
and we're going again in my recommendation it's usually better to go a little heavy on the catalyst than under catalyze generally as a rule of thumb one to two percent or 10 to 12 drops per ounce is a pretty good way to go and i apologize for folks overseas i grew up on a the standard system there so uh you guys maybe can help me out maybe in the comments below some of the folks with the the metric conversion and i'm going to try to get a table here in the shop where we've got our metric conversions and everything for you folks now this is the one that i think is the most interesting we've got polyester based gel coat here and we've got an epoxy resin which typically you would never ever ever mix these two and that is exactly what we're doing right now. I'm gonna burn up some material for you folks at home for the sake of, sake of science there <laughs> and see. Now, kind of initially, it's a little different. It looks like it's resisting mixing a little bit more than the polyester. You can still see swirls in there a little bit longer, but after just a few seconds i mean honestly it blends it blends quite nice so it's not necessarily like oil and water um these materials aren't just separating in our little mixing cup like you might expect i'm gonna mix this really nice and thoroughly once again and transfer it over here to our pan and just see how it looks it actually flows out quite nice and you don't really see any streaks or anything odd so that's interesting now obviously i'm doing this i've got um, anytime you were mixing chemicals you're not sure about it might be a fire hazard i've got plenty of fire extinguishers around here and uh, we have a plan in case something were to go sideways on us, but I don't expect that. So I've been wanting to do this experiment for a minute now, and I actually went ahead to save us time. Several days ago, I did this same thing. I mixed all these materials and set them up in some pans. And what I wanted to do is bring them around and kind of show you folks the results of what I got. So I'm going to start with the polyester sample that we did first and this is a pan a similar deal we've got our poly resin and this was about three days ago put this material in here and as it was curing it behaved about just like resin or gel coat would behave it didn't do anything weird at all which didn't surprise me um it 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 has cured quite hard um, even if I try to gouge or scratch this, I mean, it has got, it has got some strength to it. Um, if I really lean on it, it breaks nice and crisp. It, it honestly behaves like what I would expect gel coat to do if it was just pure gel coat. Now, we've got... We've got the vinyl ester, which typically vinyl ester is going to be a little stronger resin than your polyesters, although this ISO tooling is a high grade of polyester resin. So it's one of my very favorites. If you folks at home are going to be using it, don't let the tooling part of this throw you off. If you're at home and you're wanting to fiberglass over some wood and you don't want to spend the money on vinyl ester or epoxy, the ISO tooling polyester works very good. Long shelf life, just a good resin. And that is, would be considered very good for what most boats would be built of in a production operation. So with the vinyl ester, same deal. If we're using our little five in one tool, tool very minimal scratching. It seems to be quite tough. There's a crack 
it's nice and crisp kind of what you would expect appears to be fully cured in every way so this is the one that we did with epoxy now this one you can see that it is not hard there is a lot of flex and when i try to break it there's not a crisp there is not a crisp break it's quite rubbery in fact we've got some here that will release from the pan and it's it's remained quite flexible which i'm actually kind of surprised that it even cured this well but to me that is that is not the result it's like a rubberized and it's quite brittle once you bend it so there's so much mystery when you apply gel coat over a epoxy base and a lot of times what happens is like initially like for example this looks okay you're like well man it, it cured it looks just fine but in reality it's not um, that is not what you would want on your boat now even though i blended these two materials together a lot of times what happens with folks is you may make an epoxy repair and you put some gel coat over it it may initially seem to be fine but over time it can lose its bond and let go or when you initially put it on sometimes you will just basically have no cure like the gel coat remains in a in a wet state and doesn't ever activate at all so i generally don't recommend applying gel coat over any kind of epoxy now the one exception that can occasionally happen and there are some brands are better than others about tolerating gel coat is if you let your gel coat cure very very thoroughly like for days and days sometimes maybe even a couple weeks and then come back with a grinder and a very very aggressive like 24 or 36 grit disc and you put a very aggressive grinder surface on there and when the gel coat goes on there rather than any kind of a chemical or molecular bond you're just getting a mechanical bond where the gel coat can kind of grab onto some of those loose fiberglass fibers but i still don't recommend that so i'm hoping you folks will stay tuned in like i said very shortly i've got a product that we're hoping to demo that is designed to tie epoxy resins to gel coats and it's supposed to work beautifully so i hope you guys enjoyed this little experiment you know if you did the likes the shares the comments the thumbs up and i'm going to ask a personal favor for you folks especially the ones that have been watching share this with your boating community or your friends um the youtube thing is not my full-time occupation the charter business and we do repair work that is my main gig and it takes a lot of time to do these videos and i would love to do more of it but the channel has to continue to grow and you guys have been super super supportive so if there's anything you can think of to spread the word about the channel to the boating community or the fishing community that you're around would be greatly appreciated by me and my family so you folks know i appreciate you so much it's Captain Joe here with Island Marine Charters, Fish Bump TV here on YouTube. My son as my amazing cameraman working hard behind the scenes. And we will catch you folks in the next episode.